Uh, but let's all pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for what you're doing through this summer digital experience, the first of its kind within our youth denomination here at Foursquare. And we thank you that despite all the social distancing and um, just orders to stay at home and not allowing large gatherings to happen, you still find a way for the body of Christ to gather. And so we thank you for that. We thank you for how amazing you are, how patient you are with us, how merciful and, 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 and gracious you are, how forgiving you are, and more importantly, how loving you are. And God, we pray for this time. Uh, we pray that as we open ourselves up to learn a little bit, that um, we would be receptive to whatever it is that you have. And although creative writing isn't necessarily a theological, spiritual pursuit, if you will, I guess some can argue, Lord, that it is, but uh, in a nutshell, it, it, it isn't. But nonetheless, it's still a tool that we truly can use uh, for the kingdom. And so we praise you and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, so again, you're here for the creative writing session, as you can see there, for the summer 2020 digital experience. Uh, let me let me share a little bit about myself, a little bit. You heard Gary share who he is, um, but I'm uh, three things, well, many things, but uh, a couple of highlights about what I do is one, I'm a pastor. I've been licensed with Foursquare for nearly 20 years, got my license uh, 2000, 2001, and I started off as a youth pastor for, oh, I don't know, a decade, maybe even 12 years over at a church in Harbor City. Um, and then I took on a church. We planted a church uh, about 2014 um, for a church called The Branch in downtown Long Beach. And I was there for six years. I recently stepped down as the lead pastor, handed it over to an amazing pastor and a, and a, and a gal named Pastor Michelle. She's doing a wonderful job leading the community there. Uh, my family and I just felt like it was time for us to take a break uh, from ministry for a season um, to try to find ministry opportunities closer to home. Uh, we don't live in Long Beach. Um, we live a little bit further out. And so uh, taking a time to rest and still doing poetry, still doing writing uh, all the while within the midst of taking a break from ministry. Um, I'm a writer. I have a few books out that's available online. You just look up my name. My name is right there in the slide, um, Amazon. I know that Barnes and Nobles and Borders don't have brick and mortars anymore. Uh, but they still do have their online stores. You can check it out there. Uh, and I'm a soul poet. I'm a spoken word artist. I, artist. I've been doing poetry since 1995, which definitely predates most of you guys, um, if not a good majority. And um, I fell in love with uh, not just poetry, but spoken word poetry um, when I got turned on to it in, in 95. And I've been performing not just in churches, um, but I've been performing in what they call secular venues, whether it be uh, coffee shops, bars, uh, big stages uh, that aren't necessarily Christian. Uh, but of course, I do share uh, poetry within the church. A lot of times I'll infuse spoken word into my sermons. Um, and yeah, so I'm a pastor, writer, poet, been married uh, for 15 years, got three boys. Uh, my oldest one, who is a youth, he, unbeknownst to me, uh, he joined the first session. So that was kind of cool when I, uh, when, when I found out he joined in. Um, but he's, uh, he's, and then I have two, two younger ones who are, who are in the children's ministry, who were a part of the kids digital experience last week. Um, yeah, and, and so that's who I am. Just a couple of my social media outlets, if you want to take a look at what I do. Uh, two of the main social media outlets that I use, of course, like many is IG and Facebook. I do have a Twitter, but that's mostly for my social commentary as well as political commentary. But as far as my creative and my life stories, you can follow me there at Derek Angoy Poetry at both Instagram and Facebook. And or you can go on my website as well. Um, I got a blog on my website that I share various thoughts, spiritual creative, family, sports, political, whatever it might be, you can follow me there. And you can also see uh, links to my videos of poetry at my website there at DerekEngoy.us. Um, I also help lead an open mic group uh, called The Definitive Soapbox. It's a monthly open mic that meets at a local coffee shop. And uh, before COVID, 
right? We've been around for 11 years, almost 12 years now. And, you know, we average maybe anywhere from 80 to 100 people who come out to participate. And, um, you know, we bring out features every month who share uh, international features as well. And so we have some pretty well-known poets, if you're familiar with the poetry uh, social, I guess, network. We have some pretty well-known poets who come out and share. And since COVID hit, though, we've had to switch to a Zoom format. And uh, not very many people attend in comparison to what we, we've had physically. We have about maybe uh, 50, maybe, participants on a Zoom chat, which I think is pretty still phenomenal to get 50 people out to a Zoom open mic, which is kind of odd. Um, but it's a little more intimate, of course. It's a little bit more um, in your face, but, but it, it's good. I also have a podcast. Um, we wrapped up season one uh, late last year. And we were intending to jump into season two, but when COVID hit, everything shut down. And, and, you know, myself and a couple of the hosts that we've brought on to be a part of the podcast, you know, we like, we like being in each other's physical space. And so that's obviously hard to do. Um, so we're still planning out what that could look like. Uh, we're probably going to launch season two a little bit later than anticipated. Uh, but you can go on. It's uh, called Breathe. And it's about faith and creativity. We interview different artists from all walks of life, not necessarily poets or writers. Um, we do have graffiti artists on there. Uh, we interviewed a couple of culinary artists as well. So artistry isn't just uh, confined to just, you know, the traditional forms. But we had a baker on there. We had a barbecue sauce connoisseur on there. Um, you know, and, and, and we have, uh, uh, we had a shoe a shoe rest restoration kind of uh, custom guy who uh, participated in that podcast. And so if you go on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, all major platforms um, that, you know, that have podcasts, you can uh, check that out and just look up Breathe, uh, Faith and Creativity, or you can look up my name. And uh, yeah, and you could uh, see me or hear us on there. Um, what you're going to need for this session, of course, again, this is a writing breakout session. Um, I'm going to ask you to take a moment, if you don't have one already, to go grab a pen or a pencil or crayons or markers, whatever you fancy, uh, and something to write on, whether it be a piece of paper or a journal, or, you know, it could be, you know, uh, if you're on your computers and you have access to your phones, use your phones to, on your note sections because uh, we're going to do a writing activity in a little bit. But before we get into that, and as you guys are getting your material ready, uh, Gary's going to show us a video of one of, um, one of my performances. It was actually one of the larger venues that I performed at. There's a, an annual spoken word event. It's a Christian spoken word event, and it's actually the largest, Christ, the largest Christian spoken word event that happens in our country, uh, nearly 10,000 people attend. And it's called Rhetoric. It usually is here on the West Coast in California. And this one was a performance I did in 2017. So uh, Gary, take it away. And uh, we'll take a look at that and then we'll come back. Hey, All right, now do this with me, inhale. Now exhale. Let's do it again. Inhale. Now exhale. And when you do it again, imagine him, Elohim, breathing streams of rivers racing directly into your lungs, but you don't gasp for air. Nah, far from it. You're resuscitated from this life into eternity, and you love it. Inhale. See, if Jesus was a guitar, strum it. You pluck it. You capo on the third fret because three is the beginning of all things and there's nothing like it. He's melodic, perfect pitch, no matter the octave. He's adventurous. He's a graffiti artist. He's a can of Krylon saving humanity from its destruction. He's God incarnate and he backs up his words with actions now. Exhale. And then there's us. Don't even get me started on us thinking we are the all-knowing students circumventing the syllabus. It's ridiculous to think that we can blink our way into atonement. We fall madly in love with the argumentation of the scriptures, yet we do nothing with it. Like the Stoics and the Greeks, the emperors in Crete, 
the elders and deacons, the pastors and priests. How many more hundreds of thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars do we have to spend on our church services before we finally get it? Before we understand that Jesus wasn't worried about lighting schemes or financial budgets. Before we understand that Jesus was on mission and not complacent. Listen, before we understand that we've been commissioned to leave our pews and saturate the neighborhood tendency, the gospel the gospel is good news meant for the lost and not the Sunday Christian. So there I was in the middle of a laundromat standing in the presence of God talking to an agnostic. He was caustic at the mere mention of any religious content and I have to admit, I didn't necessarily disagree with his argument. And although all of my theological training tells me that I should convert him, well that's not my job nor in my power to do so. He told me he once followed Jesus but Christianity got in the way and the truth and the life was replaced by production lines and proper etiquette for Sundays. So I painted a picture for him. One marked by different gate spray tips, fanning and flaring sunsets and horizons, selfless backdrops of cityscapes align the composition to make way for the reality of redemption. I go on to tell him to imagine Christ in the center of our incarceration. He's drawing his community outward and he's given us the keys to the kingdom. And you know what? He smiled. He was thrilled because he hadn't heard the kingdom gospel in a while or ever for that matter. So church, why are we holding on to the keys so tightly? Why are we creating impossible barriers for, you know, those people from entering into his community? Do this with me, inhale, now exhale. See, it's invigorating, right? See, we breathe the same air as those people. We wear the same clothes as those people. We eat the same food as those people. Heck, we smoke the same cigarettes as those people. We drink the same alcohol as those people. We're addicted to the same vices as those people. We struggle the same struggle as those people because those people, there are people. See, see, we are them. There is no us. There is no versus them. There's just we. And the ironic reality that baffles me is this. Although we're all guilty of sin, Christ still came into our world and he saturates us from within to breathe life for those people and for us. Do this with me. Inhale. Now breathe. And for those of you familiar with the poetry here, that's where you clap and snap by poets and stuff like that. And so, yeah, so again, that was a, 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 a huge honor that I had being invited to perform there. And so that's kind of what I do when I hit the stage. Um, thanks, Chelsea, for snapping. I, I, I see that there in the chat. Um, but let me tell you this, words are very powerful, right? There's a phrase that I always heard growing up that, says this sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt me and i believe that phrase is somewhat misleading because words definitely do hurt you know words have a way of living i guess within our emotions to one day fan into this full-on flame as we grow older and you know for those who believe words don't mean anything um, again, I, I believe it's misleading because words are very powerful and what we say to people has a way of sticking. And as you can see there, uh, words, they can be used to uplift, uh, but they also can be used to tear down. And especially as believers, we want to use our words to uplift people, right? The scriptures tell us, you know, constantly to be encouraging, to be uplifting, to, to nurture and, 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 and to, 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 to be for one another. And, and so, you know, we need to use our words carefully. And I believe that the, the biggest or the greatest spoken word artist to ever exist is God himself, right? God, I believe, is the best spoken word artist because he spoke life, right? As a spoken word artist myself, right, I write my words down, I'll share them. And, you know, the poem can either be good or bad, depending on who receives it. But God literally spoke. He literally spoke words and life came into existence. Talk about how powerful that is, right? God simply said like water. And then all of a sudden water just came out of nowhere, right? God said birds. And all of a sudden birds started flapping in the air, right? God even spoke humankind into existence. And so God definitely is the most powerful and I believe the best spoken word artist out there. And 
as artists ourselves, and, and, you know, if I can be specific to those who do believe in Jesus, um, every time I speak, I don't know who's, even if it's a Christian gathering, I can't always assume that everyone is a believer. And so um, if I could speak specifically to the believing community, especially those who believe in God, I think we have an advantage because we are connected to the greatest spoken word artist ever. And as we continue to nurture our relationship with God, as we continue to nurture our creativity with the Lord, I believe that our creativity will begin to flourish and continue to excel as we connect with him. Because again, him being the greatest spoken word artist, and I'll even add that the greatest artist um, to ever exist and continue to exist um, in God, that as we continue to connect with him and, and nurture him, uh, nurture our relationship with him, our creativity will begin to just excel and flourish. And so the question for all of us and the question that I want us to, to ask ourselves, not just for the sake of this breakout session, but for the sake of just our lives as a whole, is to ask the question, how will we use our words? How will we use our words, especially in a time like this, 2020 has turned out to be a crazy year and not in a good way. Right? I don't know if you remember 2019 and all those memes that went out and that said that, you know, 2020 is going to be so lit because all of the holidays um, are going to fall on the weekend. You know, whether it be Fourth of July, whether it be Christmas and Halloween and, and, and such. You know, people were going nuts because they realized that all the holidays were going to fall on a Saturday, which means that we could sleep in. We don't have to worry about going to work the next day or going to school the next day. And it, as soon as 2020 hit, it just took a turn for the worse. I mean, Kobe died in January um, and then COVID hit and then George Floyd was murdered. Now you got all this racial division going on. And especially in the time like this that we find ourselves in, it's important, it's very important, especially as believers, to ask the question, how will we use our words? Will we use our words to uplift, as I mentioned a few moments ago, or will we use our words to divide? And I'm hoping as believers, we will choose uh, the latter, that, that we would use our words to uplift people and encourage people and to, 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 to unify people. And it's important. Like, you know, I, I remember this past week, I was talking to someone who, 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 who visibly looked low. This person looked very, you know, sad about something. And, you know, I didn't know them. I just saw them on the streets and that's just my nature. I have a tendency to talk to everybody. And, you know, I, I didn't know if this person believed in God or not, but I just, wanted to encourage them. So I just said, Hey, I just want to let you know that, that, that you're loved and whether you feel like you're loved or not, just know that you are loved. And we began this conversation about what this person was going through and they thanked me for the encouraging words. And, and so I want to encourage you all to continually ask your question or ask that question. How will we use our words? Again, will we use our words to tear people down or will we use our words to encourage one another? So words, our are very, very powerful. So to that end, I want to go into our writing activity. Um, I asked you guys uh, a little bit earlier to grab something to write with and something to write on. Or again, you can type it in the notes app of your phone. But we're all going to participate in an activity writing one of the most shortest uh, formats of poetry. You know, when I was asked to lead this workshop, I they wanted me to come up with an activity that everyone can participate in. And, you know, given the time limitations, uh, we can't really go into the core of creative writing, the core of poetry even. And so I figured that, hey, let's, let's all write haiku. It's one of the shortest forms of poetry, perhaps maybe even one of the easiest forms to, to, to write. And so for those of you who don't know what haiku is. Um, it's very short. It's only three lines and it follows a certain syllabic pattern. Uh, your first line is going to be five syllables, right? So let me clarify something, not five words, right? But five syllables. So in haiku, you could literally have one line with one word that has five syllables, like the word opportunity, opportunity. That's five syllables. That will be your first line. Uh, and then your second line is seven, and then your last line is five, which gives you a total of 17 syllables. And now haiku, just to remind you that um, haiku doesn't need to rhyme. 
It doesn't need to rhyme. It can if you like, but it doesn't need to. Uh, so, you know, I want to share a couple of haiku to, to, to get us going, to, to get our brains kind of moving, the cogs in our brains start moving. Um, but let me share this one. Uh, Gary, if you can flash this one on the screen. Again, it says, now it's broken down because of the text, because of how, how, how large the text is. It has four lines, but it's really only three. So the first line says, I see your thumbprint. So again, I see your thumbprint. That's five syllables. The next line is stained on the city's concrete, stained on the city's concrete. That's seven. And then the last line, just trying to make it. Right, so that's that's your 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 next line. So it's I see your thumbprint stained on the city's concrete, just trying to make it. Okay, so um, uh, you know what? Ah, I just realized that. Thanks, Chelsea. That last line has six syllables. So if if you can visually erase the word "just," then you have your five syllables. Thanks for pointing that out, Chelsea. Uh, I just got so excited to write something. So we're gonna we're gonna adjust that in our heads. Just erase the word just on that last line, and it will read now, I see your thumbprint stained on the city's concrete, trying to make it, trying to make it. Um, I want to read actually a couple of other um, haiku that I put together just to kind of help um, encourage us or to get our, our, our brains flowing a little bit. So uh, there's this young girl. She's, she was three. She's now four. Uh, her name is Audrey, and she had heart surgery recently. And I ended up writing a haiku in dedication uh, to her. Uh, she's she came out of surgery just fine, you know. Smiles. She's 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 vibrant as as normal. So she did a really 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 great. She pulled through really really greatly. Um, and so what I did was I didn't just write one haiku. Um, this haiku actually has six different stanzas, but they're all haiku. Right, and so if you don't know what a stanza is, a stanza is just like a paragraph in story writing. Um, but this one is called Audrey Haiku, and it, it reads like this. Smiles beam brighter when you scamper into a room infecting laughter. Drum beats pulsating to the rhythms of your heart, you conduct music. You elate acres of branches to blossom into best versions of love. Your name means noble, it means strength, as if to say no force can stop you. Walls crumble in your presence, letting in joining hands of unity. Daffodils, tulips, and sunflowers reflecting your passionate embrace. And so that's an example of six different haiku formed into one piece. Right? So that's something that you can do. Another haiku that I wrote uh, is in honor of Southern California. For those of you who are not in Southern California, we, you know that we don't have traditional winters here. Our winters probably at coldest is low, low 70s, maybe high 60s. We don't get very much snow in Southern California. Um, and so this short haiku is in honor of my hometown. Beads of sweat dripping, windshield welcoming winter, in Southern Cali. Boom. Um, and so that is Southern California. Um, and then one more before I release us to uh, write some things. It's called um, To Write Love on Her Arms. That's the name of the haiku. And I think the title is actually longer than the actual haiku. Anyways, here we go. Sharp, smooth steel slices, dizzying winds edges me closer to its point. So those are a couple of or a few haiku uh, to help you get going. Um, so Gary's going to play some songs in the background. Uh, but your writing prompt is this. Um, I want you to write a haiku or many haiku um, with the writing prompt, I am passionate about. And then you write what you're passionate about. You don't need to include that phrase. You don't need to include those words in your haiku. Um, but that's what I want you guys to write about. I want you to take maybe like 10 minutes. We're going to spend 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to give you time to write. Uh, for those of you who want to hop on to share your piece, um, you know, let us know in the Q&A, not the chat. Let us know in the Q&A. Hit us up on the Q&A so we can see it that you want to share. Um, given that this is a youth conference, I do want to encourage you to keep it 
um, wholesome, if you will. Uh, and um, we'll go from there. So Gary, if you can go ahead and play some music, I'll give uh, y'all about 10 minutes to write your haiku uh, with the prompt, I am passionate about. So go ahead. Just me and you, is this dead or alive? Are you planning to stay or will you run away, leaving me to ask why? This was the first of the letters I'd write to you. Every morning and every night, and I'd never quite send them too lost in my thoughts, too afraid. Of what you'd say. So I got a question on the chat there for, uh, I think it's Chaley. Wait, what are we doing? We're writing a haiku uh, with the writing prompt, I am passionate about. As these days turn to months and these autumn nights come, is this love what we need? Are we willing to try? Putting in enough time to find out what this means. This was the next of the letters I'd write to you. Every morning, every night, and I'd write and rewrite them, but throw them away in the end. Never say this was the next of the letters I'd write to you. This was the next of the letters I'd write to you. Nobody like you 
All right, we're going to give you a couple more minutes. If you want to share your piece and come on the chat, or not the chat, but on the call, go, go ahead and let us know in the Q&A box, not the chat box, but let us know in the Q&A box that you want to come on as a panelist to share your piece. You don't have to. Uh, what I will do, um, as I'm noticing some of you are already putting your pieces in the chat, I think I'll go ahead and, or in the Q&A, some of you have sent us some already. Um, I'll go ahead and share those um, without telling people who you are for the sake of confidentiality. But if you do want to come on, let us know in the Q&A. Gary will take a look at uh, who wants to join and uh, we'll put you on. And we got a couple people already expressing interest in joining uh, the call to share their piece. So I'll give you a couple more minutes to write and then uh, we will continue. So go ahead and keep writing. Couple here. I've got. Looks like amazing. The amazing nerd boy wants to share. Want to bring him on really quick? Yeah. All right. I'll get a couple of them ready. Sean Lorian. I'm gonna get you on here. I'll keep going through y'all. Wait. No. No. Thank you. I don't actually want to be on the call and share. You. You, you can. Oh. You, you want to turn, turn off your video and just share it audibly? I think you can. You just send mine to everybody. Sure. Can you, uh, did you send it already in the Q and A? I think you left. Oh, well, if you're still okay. on there, go ahead and send it in the Q and A and I'll read it out loud. Sean Lorian, you said you will promoting the panelists. Uh, can I get out of here? Yeah, I'm gonna take you out, buddy. Hold on. I'm gonna stop your video. Sean, are you on here still? Yeah, I don't wanna be on this though. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got it. All right, let's see who else we got here. 
All right, uh, back to Q and A. Let's get out Chelsea. Yeah. I think Chelsea's out. Chelsea said she wants to share. Chelsea, Chelsea. Let's see see again. Chelsea, I'm going to make you a panelist. Gabby, I'm going to make you a panelist. Hello. Hey. Hi. Get it. So, Let's hear it. Okay. Stage light shines brightly. The melodies surround me. Interpretations. Boom. <laughs> we snapping for you. We snapping for you. For those of you watching, snap. You got to snap it out. Snap it. <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea. Yay. All right, we got Gabby. Gabby said she asked if she could share. She's on here. All right. Chelsea, Gabby, DJ Error. I'm going to get DJ Error on here. You're all doing great. I think uh, Che Lee wants to share. All right, I'll get, I'll get Chaley ready. Did Gabby jump off? Yeah, yep. I uh, put her out because of the attendee. Mally Kearns wants to share. It's a Midwesterner. Let's get him on. All right, DJ Error. Hi. You're up. Okay, uh, I don't really, okay, so I'm new to the whole haiku thing. I, I write stories mostly, but uh, I said, United we pray faithfully with open mind, our bliss is assured. Booyah! Look at you! Good job! For someone who doesn't write haiku. Good job! Thank you for sharing. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, Chaley, you're up. Chorus, melody, a decent beat, some passion, and a story equals music. Nice. Oh, look at that! I wanted to do it about art, but I decided to do it about music instead because I couldn't, I didn't have words for art. That's all right. You did a great job on that one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got a group from Indiana here. Mary. All right, from Pawnee, Indiana. Pawnee. <laughs> oh, sorry. A little questions there with them. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is the words being told. I hold them deep in my soul. The words from my Lord. Booyah! All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, who do we got? We got Chelsea on already, yeah? Yeah, Chelsea, we did. Now we got at, we got one on here asking if you could read theirs. You see that towards the bottom, 4.45 p.m.? In the, in the... Nay. 4.45, sure, all right. Colors of paint dripping, a rainbow of words written, music raining down. Boom, awesome one. Awesome one. Yeah. yeah. Do we get Gabby back on? Gabby? I think they were on for a second and then it, something happened and they disappeared. Let's see. I think, I think they were on and they didn't, they didn't stay on. If they want to get on, just let us know again. Yeah, I think they're asking what happened. Let's try to get Gabby back on. And as we're getting Gabby back on, let me read another one, a couple of them that wants us to read there. So let me go find it real quick. Let me just read a bunch of these while we're waiting for Gabby. Worship covers me, pray shields me from the enemy. It's a way of life. Um, <laughs> Minecraft is cool, y'all. I got... Yeah, I got block items and swords too. I love it's very fun. Boom. Um, how could you? Let me see. Well, I don't know. Let me see. How? Little, 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 little. All right, I think we're ready for Gabby. Gabby, yeah, we got you on here. This is what happened last time. Gabby, you may have to hit unmute on your microphone and start your video. No? Yes? You there, Gabby? No? All right. Well, 
Um, going once. Yeah. I think the amazing nerd boy wants to try one more time. All right, let's try that. All right. Here we go. And I'm going to ask him what his real name is. Oh, we're doing that. Thanks, everyone, for typing in Snap. Love it. Like snap. Snap, snap, snap. <laughs> the amazing nerd boy. Nope. Okay. Uh huh. Can you turn your? This is good. Oh, good. Thank you. What's your name, by the way? Vincent. Thank you, Vincent. The patient warrior. He stalks his enemies still. Sword in the darkness. Boom, there you go. Snap, snap, snap all around. Thank you, Vincent, for sharing. Thank you so much. All right. Well, hey, uh, thanks for your participation. We got a couple more uh, items to go through before we end our session. Um, as I said in the first session, I want to try to create an art piece with all of your haiku. Uh, in a little bit, you'll see a slide with my email. I would love for you guys to send me your emails. I've already gotten a ton from the first session um, and I want to try to create an art piece and try to find a way to send it to all of your districts. I know we're across the country um, and international, as it seems, uh, from Japan and, and Russia, I think, if that is all true. But it, either way, I want to try to send it out in a way. So if you can email me your haiku, if you're willing to. But let me, let me just go over some tips for writing. Um, I know that some people ask ask me a lot of times like hey how, how do you how do you get into writing or you know when you discover or when you find yourself in writer's block um you know how do you get out of it but one way uh is a activity called morning pages there's a book called the artist way by julia cameron and there's an activity where you grab yourself a journal and you put it under your pillow and the idea is every day you wake up before you do anything else you take that journal out and you just start writing for 30 minutes without thinking about punctuation, without thinking about grammar, without thinking uh, whether it makes sense or not. But the idea is just to keep writing. And after 30 minutes are done, you close the journal, you put it under your pillow, and you don't look at it for the next 30 days. So you do this activity for 30 days. And then after the 30 days are done, you open up your journal and you look at your journal. And what you'll discover is a ton of ideas for new poems, new stories, for those of you who don't necessarily write poem, but you write stories. Um, maybe you're a comic book writer uh, and artist, you'll find ideas. Uh, you'll also find dreams, because a lot of times I have vivid dreams, but the moment I wake up, I, I have a hard time recalling them. Uh, I, what I find is the moment I wake up and, and start journaling, I'll realize that, oh wow, these are some of the dreams that I'm able to capture. and that practice and that activity will help you um, continue to become a good writer. So that's morning pages. The next tip is to practice formats. For me, I'm a spoken word artist who doesn't necessarily perform formatted poetry, but I write a ton of haiku. I write a ton of uh, sonnets. I write a ton of senkanes to help me practice because the more I find it, that the more I practice and commit to formatted writing, it helps with my free form. Uh, there's a phrase that says you have to think outside of the box. Well, you can't think out of a box if you're not in a box to begin with. And so the haikus, the sonnets, the formatted poetry is that box to work out of. And so once you practice these formats and master them, then your free form writing will be that much more better. So practice your formats. Uh, also be open to crit uh, criticism. I know that as artists and writers, we are our biggest critics. And a lot of times we don't want to hear criticism from other people, but I would encourage you blossoming writers to find a handful of people that you trust who are active writers, who are perhaps maybe even older or have been writing longer than you and to let them read your work and be open to constructive criticism because the idea is we always want to get better and we can always improve. I believe that life is a continual um, experience of learning and education doesn't stop. Now, we may not be in formal education like school, but we should always continue to learn. And so be open to criticism. And then finally, um, approach your writing and as, 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 as a relationship. Um, 
you know, it, it takes work and nurture for you to harness your creative side. And as you view it as a relationship with any relationship, whether it be friendship, um, married couples do this, you know, uh, you got to invest in the relationship. And if you don't invest in poetry and, and look at it as a nurturing relationship, uh, then it'll be hard to, to really master. And so I would encourage you to uh, view poetry slash writing as a relationship and nurture it every single day. Um, and so to that end, I know there, you know, we can only go through so much within an hour, uh, but specifically for those who really want to pursue writing, um, I would encourage you to, um, you know, ask the questions uh, on the next slide. You can see all of my contact information again, uh, stay connected. My Instagram and Facebook again is Derek Ngoy uh, Poetry. Go to my website, DerekNgoy.us, or my email, which is up there as well, info at DerekNgoy.us, and ask your questions. Um, you know, I, like most people, I have my phone on me all the time, which isn't necessarily a good thing uh, sometimes, but I, I'm usually quick to answer my emails. And so if you have any writing questions, um, life questions, if you will, uh, feel free to email me and use that email address as well. Uh, to send me your haiku if you want it included in this art piece uh, that I want to try to put together with all of your pieces. Also in the email, if you do send me your poem and you don't want to be uh, identified, if you want it to be remained anonymous, um, I want to respect your privacy uh, and indicate that in the email as well. Um, we have about four minutes until we're officially done. Um, if you have any questions, be willing to stick around and, and share some answers. So, you know, there's that Q and a box, go ahead and type out some quick questions. So we have about four minutes. Uh, I can even look through the chat if anyone has any like general wonderings, but, um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know, uh, regarding writing, of course. Um, I noticed early on someone commented that they looked at my Instagram. Yes, I do skate. Um, not as much as I used to when I was younger. Um, now I'm more of a teacher of my sons. I have three boys and I'm trying to teach them. So, uh, you know, I don't do drop-ins and such anymore uh, just because I'm older and my bones and muscles take longer to heal. But, you know, I'll, I'll teach them a, you know, a, 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 a kick flip and ollie here and there. I'll teach them how to do shove and pop shove here and there. Um, hey, thank you for the late Father's Day greeting, if that's for me. Um, but yeah, yeah, so uh, that, yeah, I do skate. Um, any other questions? Hey, Gabby, no worries. Uh, your audio didn't work. That's okay. If you want to be included on, uh, the little art project that I want to try to put together, go ahead and send me the email of your piece. I'm sure it's amazing. Um, yeah. Any other questions out there? Did you see the one it's in the Q and a, um, give your younger self what advice would you give your younger self um I, I really would lean on uh one of the points is um i would tell my younger self to just keep writing um see when i was younger i didn't know about the, the morning pages and really that's an that's a practice that just to keep writing um even when you don't feel like it just to keep writing and so um, that's what I would say. My email address, um, it's info, I-N-F-O at DerekNgoy.us, I-N-F-O at D-E-R-R-I-C-K-E-N-G-O-Y. Um, Gary, can you type that in the chat for me? Um, where do you start doing spoken word? Like, do you use any specific meter rhymes or literary devices? I do use a lot of um, metaphors and similes in my poetry. Um, I also was a former hip hop artist, so I have a lot of cadence and rhythm in that sense when I do my poems. Um, great question there. Um, how many years have you been writing for? I, I've been writing since 94, 95. So I came to Jesus. I met Jesus in 94 uh, and immediately after I started writing. So I've been writing quite a, quite a long time now, since 1994. Um, into slam poetry. What is one tip that inspired you to express yourself best without getting writer's block? Um, yes. So I have never competed in a slam poetry contest, although my, my poetry group, we hold one every year. Um, I just don't feel I have the chops to compete in poetry. Um, but yeah, getting over writer's block, as I said earlier, you just keep writing. 
Um, even when you don't feel like it, even if you don't have anything, I would suggest just going outside and looking at something. For me, I would go in my backyard, look at an orange. Let's say I have an orange tree and an avocado tree. I'll just try to write. I'll start, even start writing orange and then just write. I don't know what to write about an orange. This orange, and then all of a sudden, it'll just start flowing. This orange is circle or a spheric. It's not quite orange just yet. It's yellow. Uh, and I'm just looking at my orange tree right now. You know? um, and so that's what I would say. I, you have to kind of force yourself out of writer's block and just find something to write about and just write, you know? Uh, avocado tree outside. I see a lot of seeds on the ground because the, the squirrels get to it. And so I would just, just write about what I'm seeing and then eventually it'll start my juices flowing. Um, hey, but thanks Pierce Butcher. I can compete. Thank you very much for that encouragement. Maybe I will compete one day. Um, ideas that you can write about. Honestly, um, I've written about trees. I've written about clouds. I've written about emotions. I've written about my mental health issues. I've written about my love for my wife and my kids. So you can virtually write about anything. And that's the beautiful thing about haiku as well. Because it's so short, you can literally take anything and write a short haiku about it. So for um, uh, Pierce Butcher, your question, how, um, what are ideas that you have that you can write about? I would just say virtually anything that you can put your eyes on. Uh, that's what I would say. Um, Cool. I think we're up to our time. Um, I believe, was it four hours from now? Is the last session, I think? Is it four hours from now? I don't know. I got, I got to look. I know it's, oh, no, three hours, six o'clock Pacific. Yeah. So six o'clock Pacific is when the last session, the evening session is uh, going to go underway. I'll pop open um, on Facebook every once in a while. I'm like, hey, oh, here we go. Saturday. Main session, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 6 o'clock my time. So there you go. Um, hope you guys can join the last session. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining in the session. Stay in touch on social media with me. Uh, send me your questions um, you know, on my email and your poems if you want. But thank you again for participating. Uh, I'd say hope to see you soon, but I don't know if <laughs> given that this is like a, a, a nationwide thing. Uh, but anyways, hope to catch you on social media. Thanks for joining in. Peace, y'all. Like Thanks, Derek. Peace, man. Peace.